We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any additions or changes, Dan? Yes, just one. Let me first, so I, I have a perforated eardrum right now, so I'm a little hard of hearing out my ear. So things are kind of echoing around me a little bit, so if I look at you like I didn't understand, it's because I can't hear. <laughs> That's how I am all the time. <laughs> exactly. So I just want everybody to understand that. It just it makes things move a little easier. So we'll do. try to keep turning my good ear to the but, um, and then the addition we have is uh, add the purchase of a, a, a truck for the uh, highway department. Under new business. Yes, please. That's an addition to the one that's already on the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next, approve the minutes of April 8th. 2019. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? There's a yes. Co couple of corrections, yeah. Go ahead. One under approved warrants. Brian made the motion and he approved it. Seconded it. Yeah. And then four of us approved it. <laughs> Great. But I don't know. You weren't here then, right? I, I was not here. Chris wasn't here. Okay, but I wasn't sure whether you were or weren't because you said, seems like you said you came in at 545. 545 and you were here for that, right? Yeah. Okay. But I did. You can't do both. Yes. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> can't do both. Okay, any further discussion? And I think under old business, um, there was no second listed for the motion. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would have seconded it. Okay. Is that all? I think that's it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. So pass. <clears throat> Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Seeing none. Sector control. Sarah? No. Old business. <coughs> Discuss downtown parking. Tricia. Lovely. So, as we had it last time, I was at the slow meeting to discuss about the parking. I listened to what everyone had to say. I thought about what everyone had to say about it. I understand, like you did say, yes, we will do a trial out there. I also have worked for the town long enough to know that this trial is not going to happen. We are not going to get angle parking. I felt personally. And that Dan had suggested we look at other options. And he spoke about the Noise House Museum. Next day I came in and said, let's go out and let's look at our downtown through another set of eyes, okay? I, when Richard Keith is here and he's speaking that he does not want angle parking for safety, I heard what you said, Eric. I, I listened very closely. I, I agree, we, we all need to work as a team and if part of the team is on one side and part of the team is the other, it doesn't work in this town. It doesn't work in any town. So we went out the next morning, we looked, we looked at the Noise House Museum and you'll see everyone has plans, anyone else wants to see plans? Here. Is this what you is this what you're talking yeah, about, Chris? Exactly. Yes, it There's is. There's two drawings. Just like one is the, the the other one's part of package. Okay. So this is the, the drawing yeah. that the state did up for us. Um, and this involves looking at this the the first two where it says plus two that's actually down in front of um the uh the Torah restaurant. The next one where it says minus one yeah. is in front of the gazebo. And the other one, the plus one, is down in front of the Union Bank. And, and what that shows is this was done by the agency of transportation in relationship to the paving project that's coming up this summer. Um, so their, their traffic engineer came in, if we were to do angle parking, and showed us compared to what parking spots that we have now, um, how much we would gain and lose. Um, Todd and I actually spent you know, the better part of a day walking around downtown. <coughs> so, reference wise, in front of the Del Toro um, restaurant, we would gain two parking spots down there. We actually lose one in front of the um, gazebo. 
And, and a lot of this because the line of sights and the turning radiuses are a lot different. And for safety reasons, we also have to move that crosswalk that's down by the gazebo now because it's not in a great location. So we actually lose one there. And then we um, gain one um, by the Union Complex. So overall, with the angle parking compared to what we have in that section right now, we would gain two parking spots. Mm -hmm. The other parking arrangement is that Bob and I looked at first and I looked at it and I had a Louisiana engineering manager come up with this diagram. <clears throat> this is proposed as a little rough. I already know that we have a couple changes that we would need to make. Trish has worked with uh, Borns, the yeah, Borns. property where he would actually lease this is property on the north side of A Street. Um, it needs to be filled. You know, fill's not a problem for us, fill paid. And then the other <coughs> sections are in front of the Boys House, like we discussed. <coughs> so um, those are angle parking spots, but they are also out of traffic, too. So, yeah. And um, it is cutting into the Boys House Museum property on the front side there. Right. I mean, just so everyone understands by the drawings there that you're looking at. Uh, but by adding these, we're adding 10 spaces to our downtown. Hmm. And I had to be honest, I did have some pushback from Mac, our downtown board, that was here that you listened to that night uh, about this whole parking area and like, who's going to park all the way down there at the end of the street? And I just, sometimes I, we'll go back and I talked about it with everyone on our board. I sent an email out and I said, you know, we as the downtown board need to train the people. We need to go to these businesses and say, you need to ask your employees to park at the farthest end down, instead of where the guy from Thompson's parked right out in front of his shop. You know, that's that's our job as a downtown organization. That's what we can do to make this work and make it work really well for our community. I felt like these plans were really good, adding 10 spaces to our downtown. It, it, you know, like I said, I did get a bit of pushback from them, but I also explained to them. This is a win-win for this town right here, these, these plans, by adding it in both these two locations. Um, you know, I heard what Roland said, I know what Doug will probably tell you about Angle Parking out there, and I just, I have to think of the good of all. We all do. And so, that's why we're here at the table again. Would there be, um, on the noise property, some kind of delineation? It'd be paved, I, I assume? It'll be paved. And then some like curbstone or something that people know what, Actually, where to stop. Yeah, that's we, it. We, we've looked at this a little bit already. And, you know, anything that we do as far as curbing anymore, we always use granite curb. You know, the, the village crew okay. can set granite curb. And they're, they're, they're well versed at that. So that's not a problem at all. And yes, it would be paid. Yeah. Okay. I, I was suggesting to put like a little short stone wall, cut stone wall front. That would give it a lot nicer look, you know? Yeah. Um, so you people know what are I mean? The, yeah. Look on the lawn. It, sort of a dry yeah. layout. People will maybe go to our Noise House Museum more than they do now. I mean, yeah, they're more like inviting. very big traffic out right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a, a very, you know, historic structure in our downtown, and for what it is, in some ways, we I felt they could maybe help the traffic flow. Yeah, I haven't had a chance. I was planning on reaching out to uh, the trustees for the, for the museum, mm -hmm. and I haven't had a chance to, but I was hoping they might be here tonight. But, if not, I will reach out to them, and mm -hmm. we'll go over it. We're kind of waiting for for the sketch yeah, to come. This, this came in at five o'clock. Yes. So, uh, but I also I, like I to know. Kind of this too. I kind of wonder what uh, Doug feels about it, and uh, Rolly and and uh, Richard. Okay, Doug, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Sorry. Doug? Well, down at the noise house, it might not be too bad. I mean. Uh, Again, looks, you know, on paper you can pretty much see. Yeah. Um, now this would end up coming right out to the uh, edge of where the parking is now down here, right? Right. See, it's not taken anymore. No. Roll. Be worth looking into. I said my speech already. I ain't gonna change my mind. No, but this plan here. <coughs> I just think when you start putting angle parking in, even when it, this is not Route 100, you know, this is on a side street, really. It's not by noise down yeah. here. It's just on the turnaround. It's not. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I understand you're concerned about. You still got people going around that turnaround, right? Yeah. They do about one in ten cars, and not even probably one in the twenty. The difference maybe. is you're on an angle that you can see. I mean, you're not on the straight. When you back out of there, you can build to see behind you there. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it worked really well. I mean, I and people like are driving to, slowly around that circle. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying, going to say too. I thought the same thing. The people are going to be slowing down to go around there. It's not like they're coming down the street. Yeah. Somebody's trying to back out. Richard, what do you think of it? I think it's a great improvement. <laughs> compromise. Think, kind yeah, of a compromise. I, you know, and you know, they come down around there. Of course, obviously, I can watch that all the time, and it's. I think the safety would be reasonable. You know, they do slow down. They're coming down around there. And, yeah, it's much better than up on the main street. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the rest of the board here, Eric? Yes. Uh, but the one big thing too sounds like we would only gain two parking spaces. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth doing all this. No. Down here we're going to get ten. This, this is start. this is why I think I'm back before you. Just... Right. I thought you might be. Hmm? I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Um, on the drawing, so I just want to be clear. Um, like kind of diagonally across on the police station on the upper right of this diagram. Mm -hmm. Would that be going back to Para uh, I think we'll leave that. It'll it'll stay. Stay. Yeah, I think what we want to do, we'll take the idea that came out and, and put, number one, we'll put a fog line behind those parking spaces. Okay. Um, and, and, and then we'll put some signs. I'm sure Sonny would like to put a couple signs there. So he even said, you know, compact cars only. Okay. Keep the trucks out of that. So I, I think, you know, that's probably the only example problem there as far as the angle parking in that one little section piece of the downtown okay. that it is for the rest of the downtown. And then my other question was around um, accessibility because there's no sidewalk or so is the thought that people walk behind their cars? There's the sidewalk right through the middle of the curbing, the um, right through the island, there's sidewalk now, Chris, and there's yep. sidewalk that goes all the way down Past, it would go right to where the angle parking is of the, the Borns property. We would have to do some work on that for ADA requirements at the bottom part there, definitely. But uh, the other one in the island is all accessible. Okay. I'm wondering if the business owners can have their people park in the municipal parking lot on off Pleasant Street. <laughs> Walk that far? <laughs> I know. Well, sorry. Well, honestly, I, I can tell you, if you've been through there during the daytime, that is that commuter bus stop over there on, on Pleasant Street. The, the, that parking lot is full. Mm -hmm. Just about everybody. There are very, very limited parking spaces over there now. Um, the it's, it's difficult. There are a lot of commuters. It's great. I mean, they're they're using it for what it's supposed to be, but it fills the parking lot up every day. It's pretty full. This is this is great. The question I have on the ones. Uh, on the Thompson Baker side, the Bourne property, how much, I, I'm, not, I'm trying to think how far that bank goes before it starts really Well, that's what it's going to fill up. But, but are we going to need to retain it, all the back side? It's flat up till there. I believe, excuse me, Yeah, I, I believe that there's two sections of sidewalk from where um, Park View, I think it was, it was there, yeah. where they where they had their stairs and stuff. I think there's two sections of, of concrete there. There is. Yeah, I looked at that too. I, you know, this, this last parking spot to what I call the west down towards the dam, I don't know that we'll be able to get that one in because of the slope. The other slopes, you know, there is a drop off there, but I think we can pretty well put it in. There's, there's nothing really there that would stop us from putting what I call a natural two to one slope. You know, to, to do yeah, that. that's six one. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, you're already six, down over the yeah, bank there. Down I don't, down I don't down know down that you're going to get that one in myself either. One there. Without really retaining all. And I don't know that we want to do that kind of expense for that. Would a parallel parking spot go there? I, you know, I think the problem is once there, once we get so far down there, then <coughs> what I think you'll have is, is we're almost going to create another park problem mm -hmm. is that people will start backing up a long distance to come back around the circle. I thought about that as well. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, so realistically I don't think anybody's gonna take the dirt road down by the dam to come back out. They're gonna back up a ways. And I think we maybe 
creating another hazard by doing that. So I don't know that we'll, we'll get that final spot down there. You know, like I said, I you know, just got this. I'm not really going to have a good chance right. to do it. And did you think, Dan, too, here, the in front of the noise? I thought we came up with five. Yeah, and that's the reason why, you know, but, you know, Tyler, right. Tyler reviewed it. That's the reason why we brought an engineer into it. The other thing that kind of led us to us from going any further this way, there's actually a drainage structure right there. And we didn't want to mess with the drainage mm -hmm. there so that we can still slope everything from this parking back from the noise house so that the water won't go towards the noise house. We can slope it back to that, that catch basin that's there too. There is a tree that has to go there, but it's partially dead. It's mm -hmm. like split inside the middle and it's mm -hmm. all rotting out. And so the town will agree to put another tree in over there maybe? Something, yeah. I think they I think you're going to have to if you're going to get yeah. them to agree to this. Okay, is there any other comments or questions about it? When would you think that this would be finished? This is something, yeah, I would, you know, this is like I said, this guy, I think we could probably do this. This is a pretty simple project we probably do this summer. Are we able to get the details on the lease agreement, what that looks like? Yeah. yeah. And talk to the museum folks. Right. The, the barns, I just went over and chatted with them. I mean, we didn't. He's yes. like, oh, I don't have any plans for the property right. and time too soon. So it wasn't even at the point of me talking about lease. I just wanted to throw it out there and see if he already had plans at this point. And you see even part of that, the first parking space, uh, that little uh, cut through is more spill water and light. It's right away through the, up there too, mm -hmm. down through there. Looks good. Yeah. You want to use federal grant money to build this? We could start going in like 2032 or something like that. If we did that, we could, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Okay. Let's move on here. Discuss this. What's that? Quick question. Oh, go ahead, sir. So, do I take it you've abandoned angle parking? Um, well, that would be angle parking, but we've, we've abandoned uh, expanding it further up the street. Just keep the ones that are there now. In front of the, keep the ones that are there now. Those angled parking. Yeah, the ones by um, Thompson's Flower Shop. And bad, bad move. Well, it's an experiment. If if it turns out they're not good, you've we got, can do away with you've them. You've got four spaces delineated there, correct? Yeah. Yeah, my record is six cars have been parked angled. Well, we can take a look at that. The angled parking is a disaster. Now, I have a question. Can you legally drive this way and do a U-turn into an angled parking space? Backing into it, you mean? Hmm? Backing into it. No, pulling into it. I'm going this way. I want to go into that angled parking space across the street. Instead of going up, turning, oh. coming back and slipping in, can I turn and go That's in? a law enforcement question. I, I could say. Do you have, yeah, but do you need a town ordinance to do that? No. There is such a thing in Montpelier that you can't do that, and their police department doesn't understand it. Angled parking is a safety hazard, period. No way of sands or buds. Other solutions for parking could include the employees that work downtown, could be shuttled in from a common parking space. That'll save your parking spots for the restaurants and whatever else, if you look at that. But I would certainly implore you to look at angled parking as a potential hazard. Laying the town liable for having made the decision to do it. Well, we're certainly taking that into consideration. Look into the U-turn, too. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, discuss the skate, skateboard park. Tricia. Uh, okay. This is, I honestly, didn't really want to come before this board. I've been watching it. I mean, you know, we've had this discussion about where the skateboard park is. I just read some things recently out in that social media 
about our skateboard park, I walked down the other day and said, okay, I, we as a town need to assess the situation seriously. As you'll see by the pictures there, okay, even the top where the kids play, there's holes right through the wood. Um, the top left picture that you're looking at, that's where kids run right down the thing. My recommend, recommendation to the sled board is take that skateboard park out. We are, it, it is terrible. There's metal pieces sticking up like this high. Someone is just going to rip themselves apart. It's just not. And I hate to even come before you to say this because I feel very strongly about recreational opportunities in our community. And I think they're very, very important. And, you know, we recently got the rent committee up and running. Skateboard parks are very expensive to rebuild also. And like, you know, uh, $300,000. You're not talking, you know, $100,000. If it was hundred, i I'd probably be thinking about how I could do race funds to replace this. At this point, I don't see us replacing it. But I think we need to think about taking some machinery in and taking it out of there. I know you're going to hear it from the community. You're going to hear it from families, but I think we need to think about the town of Morristown and our insurance policy and the safety of our people and our kids. And our Are there any grants available? Judy? I don't know. Yes. Are there? There probably are. But the amount of time it would take. Can we talk about a, a plan to rebuild it? Sure we can, and we should put it on our table, and we should talk about how we could do that. But at this point, I would tell you before this season gets started, either we need to invest some serious cash down there, or we need to take that skateboard park out of there. Well, you know, I've been watching it for as long as it's been there, and it seems like we just don't, there's no maintenance that's been done on it, like the boards are missing. And I've, I've remarked about how bad it looks for a long time. Yeah. And um, I mean, who was the one that kind of headed it? Was it Dave Polo or somebody? Who was the, no, um, it was, uh, the head of it? Isaac Graham. Graham. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Graham. Yeah. 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 Isaac. But it might be a good time to have the conversation yeah. with the people that use it or represent it. Sir, you had a comment? Yeah, that's the reason I came here was the skateboard, not your angle parking. The skateboard park and whole Oxbow complex in serious need of a plan. Somebody needs to sit down and I'd, I'd even suggest investing in having a landscape architect to look at what you want for recreation at Oxbow and how you want to do it. First thing though is the skate, the skate park <coughs> is an embarrassment. It's also a legal liability. I don't know the history of the skate park. I don't know who built it, why it was built, who was involved in it, but the town has the liability because it's on our property. It is a disaster looking to happen. I would strongly recommend it be taken out as soon as possible. Again, from a cursory look, and I go to Oxbow frequently enough, it's largely unused. Mm. I see kids down there all the time. I do too, and I'm down in that park a lot. I do. That's uh, the problem. During the winter. Well, there's no. four or five of them skate parking over here on Main Street right now as I drove in. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's safer than the skate park as it exists now. But do you have data? It's one thing to walk in there. I, I go in there a number of times. I see very few people ever using it. You see a lot of people. What is a lot of people? That needs to be looked at. Oxbow Park, I think, is a diamond in the rough. It has not been adequately looked at and planned for in terms of inventorying what's there, looking and seeing what will fit and how much pressure you would expect to have it. You're going to use it for free range dog running. You're going to use it for skate parking. You're going to use it for soccer fields. You're going to use it for whatever. I don't think there's a plan. I, I, think, that, I think what we've done so far, 
uh, with some success is to leave it open green space such that we don't have a designated soccer field so that the use is strictly for soccer. Um, we've stopped shy of putting the markings in because of that. That whole area is used for our music festival, our music series in the summertime. There's, there's a lot of stuff goes on down there, but I'm afraid that if we started making designated areas for soccer, and that the field starts to form, the nets are put in place, and that really becomes trouble. I didn't say do that. I don't think you should do mm -hmm. that. I think there are certainly adequate fields to play soccer. Mm -hmm. The Oxbow is in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets little attention in the winter. One of the things that I've noticed, to some chagrin, is the expansion of the lumber operation down there that has pretty much enclosed the roadway into Oxbow. The roadway, roadway into Oxbow is certainly not conducive and inviting to come in much of the winter. Uh, it needs to be looked at. Uh, I think you ought to look at what you have, look at all the possible uses, and then discard the ones that you don't think will fit be compatible. But there needs to be a plan. I was here a few months ago when somebody was proposing doing some kind of uh, disc golf uh, over at the end of Duhamel Road, uh, it, which illustrates a problem in that everybody comes in and says, oh, I want to do this on a piece of town land. There isn't a plan. If you had a plan for your resources, then you would eliminate those issues and problems. We do have a Parks and Recreation Committee who is starting to look at the Oxbow and starting to make plans on what we want to see down there. So there is, there is a, a step in that direction. Well, there is a plan, too. I mean, we've used it for years for soccer. We've used it for concerts. We've used it for community gardens. There's a plan. It just may not be outlined to everybody's satisfaction, and there may be more that can be done for organizing, but there's been a plan for many years. Is it a written plan and it is online? A lot of it has written things about it, you know, the way we have um, have it set up to use. We have procedures that have to go through. Same with uh, if it's used for weddings or events or the soccer group, you know, it's all, it's planned. <laughs> you know, there may be more to it. There's definitely a lot needs to be done with that skate park, in my opinion. But yeah. There's an the application process to use park, and uh, we have done some planning. I have to be honest. I've been connected to the community gardens for quite a few years. Um, we saw last year that there were some issues down at the community gardens. We're replacing a bunch of the handicap boxes, the raised beds right now. They're putting in a garden shed. Um, this is stuff we've done with the conservation district. You know, putting the, trees. Putting trees. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, you know, we've used their planning resources and their dollar resources to stabilize the banks. Thanks. Um, and okay. let them put the, the canoe and kayak accesses in. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, you know, We've worked, you know, just with the, the people that use the park on a regular basis too. To talk about more parking because of RK miles has come up and they use their property differently. In RK, I, I would like to just say something on behalf. I went and met the RK miles people right off when they first came. They talked about our construction. I was under the assumption from the town that we understood as a town that they were going to do construction. Let's be easy on them. There are new business in our community. We want to support our new business. I think you'll see that parking issue change 180 degrees by this fall. I think I, I feel like they understand our concerns. They listen to us, and that's just my take on our family house. They've been wonderful to work with. And they, they did put in the sidewalk, I think, too, connected. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm back to a fundamental question, though. Is there a park plan that I can look at and review? Is it online? No. It does a citizen in this town have access to a plan, not some comment that we have a plan? I'd like to see the plan. 
Well, it's not all written down the same thing, but there's many different uses of it. We are we are working on that. The Parks and Recreation is working on. We're working. We haven't started it yet. We're in the process of working on it. So we will have one. <coughs> okay. And are you going to seek public input in this plan? Uh, yeah, I think that would be one of the options we'd be looking at. Yes. Mm -hmm. We, we, we did it? get public input. They will you will you develop a preliminary plan? Distribute it to the public, have a public hearing, and get comments. Oh, I don't know if we're going well, to we may have it on an agenda. Well, whenever we talk about the Oxbow, it's on the agenda. Well, you could. You're welcome to any of the meetings that we have. So yeah. if they're having a meeting, a rec meets the, the first meeting. Wednesday of the month. You can go at eight fifteen in the morning, right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and even maybe get your name put on there, or phone number, or to, email, to yeah. email so they can let you know it's happening. Okay. So you can go. So I think what's happened in the past is it's just been growing. I mean, it started out being this thing, so there was no written down stuff. And then oh, we yeah, started making a policy, doing a lot with it, and now we're even going further. But I don't so think we want an amusement park right off quick. Did you, I don't know if you heard Trisha say, we meet the first Wednesday of the month right here at 8.15. First Wednesday, 8.15. Right, yep. Okay. I wanted to make a comment for the skate park. I, I totally get safety when I look at this, I get it. I have a concern about tearing it down without consulting with the kids. Even It's a bunch of adults in here making this decision and it's, kids are being impacted. And I'm gonna step out um, and say, it's gonna be kids that are on the margins. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure. And so I don't, I hate to see them be disenfranchised and um, also there aren't a lot of opportunities recreationally for some of these kids on the margin. So I'm going to say my piece on that. I agree 110% Judy and it's why I believe it's been a few years I've been thinking about when do we talk about mm -hmm. it with select board. Mm -hmm. Okay, It is at the point of disrepair. I know the kids are going to be, and Dan said you are going to get black over this one hard. I understand that because there isn't a lot of opportunities for kids anymore. But I really do feel like we need to do what's best for the town of Morristown. And maybe we need to start steering some of these people to E equals MC square where they have now indoor pinball and there's, they have outdoor basketball courts and you know, the town just did a pretty good funding up for them. Let's promote them. Let's tell the kids there is other things besides what you're seeing before your eyes. I mean, there's basketball courts up at the school that Sonny Brink did a few years ago. I mean, there's there's opportunities, but this is one that's a hazard to our kids. Well, I wonder if there's some way we can reach out to, I know Sarah's been working with the schools, and if there's some way we can engage the students before we go and rip it down. Yeah, I, I agree with, I want to throw this again. <coughs> I, I see the liability that, that Trish is talking about. I agree 100%. I think that the park should be closed immediately. Tearing it down? No. But I think if we put it on our agenda to discuss the future of a skate park in our community and then close the park at the same time, we're going to load this room full of people. That will spur the activism that we need. We, this, the kids aren't going to do the fundraising. They may help, but it's adults that are going to structure it and build it if it's going to be, if it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. This thing, it is, I didn't realize, I don't vote on there, so I didn't realize we have boards missing. That, that is just a, a lawsuit waiting for a place to happen. I think it needs to be closed, taped off, whatever we put on for tape, just mark it clearly that this, the skate park is no longer open. And we can post it down there that it's on the agenda for a meeting four weeks from now. So that we get into, you know, early in the season and then see what kind of community interest we have in rebuilding it. Why are we, you know, I'm just thinking about the way you used to close it in a block bag, I got everybody that I need. What about using some snow fencing to put up around it? Something like that that clearly closes it off. You know, we can get some ads. You're not going to make my skateboard park look ugly with that snow fencing. Right? Yeah, can, you that. That. <laughs> can you make it look more ugly than it is there? Yeah. What I'm I would just do thinking it. about something, because just putting tape off no. isn't going to keep no. anybody out. And any of the snow fencing <laughs> really won't keep it, but it's more of a deterrence for a barrier. So. Yeah, posting it on a on a sign down there saying we're going to have a hearing about it. Those interested, 
come to whatever meeting. That's the way. That's a responsible way to do it, rather than just going and rip and tear. That's why I'm here. And you know, there may be a bunch of parents that say, "We want to work together," and they right. want to do it. I personally <clears throat> don't want my hands in that project right now. I mean, I, I just maybe a rec does, but I personally, you know, just. My first reaction was to fix the board. You know, the board you can see missing, but oh, wait. the idea is. I would yeah. encourage you all, drive down, walk down, down, just look. I, just I walked down. all around the mm -hmm. whole thing. And I was just like, whoa, this is about enough pictures to uh, <coughs> show how bad it really is. Would you have an opportunity to see if there are any grants out there for something for us to start, at least have a, a, a starting point? Tony Hawk's Fund. Yeah, that's the that's a big one that does skateboard parks. Um, and just bear in mind that there's a lot of demand on the Tony Hawk. You're, we've applied for it once already, way back when. You're only allowed to apply for it twice. Okay. So and it, it's really a, a lot of money. I think they paid for I came around to fifty percent match or something along those lines, mm -hmm. but um, they they it really looks to to urban areas to do that. Um, so I don't. Thank you. Based on the criteria that I've read, it would be hard for Morristown to meet the financial need criteria of that grant. We're the most urban in Lamoille County. <laughs> that's, that's a count. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Right. <laughs> so, um, and it, the match is a lot. Okay. I mean, when you're talking three hundred thousand dollars, you know, if yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah. a fifty-fifty, I know it's in the millions in Burlington. Yeah, yep. exactly. Well, I think, yeah, it was. Yeah, the one in Burlington was close. It's I huge. It's huge, but it's close to it was over a million dollars, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it's they're, they're very, very expensive to build and design. So. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Land and Water Conservation Fund, administered by the state, I think. You know about it? Yeah, I do, but they wouldn't fund the project like this. Hmm? They wouldn't fund the project like this. Why not? Municipal parks? Yeah, but I don't think they have small money. grant. They have small grant program. Yeah, the, their small grant program, the one that they come out with, is recreation facilities grant. I think that tops out at fifteen thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. And you have to have the one one. And you, you could take money and match to it, but to build something like that, probably correctly, I think Trish is probably maybe even mm -hmm. the, the the three hundred thousand dollar figure is probably pretty accurate to, to build something down there. I had a guy who built them out of Harvick. Right. Um, and he gave me a quote. I think it was $322,000. So That's what his know, quote was. The, they, they're very, very expensive. Um, and I don't know of any grants in the state that are even going to come close to funding a $300,000 project like that. Well, let's um, close it and put up a notice. Set up a meeting or hearing. Is a valid concern. At least close that, and this way here we'll get some feedback. We'll know because my opinion is, is how many people are using there, how many people want them. That's one issue. You're, you're going to get some hard pushback. Oh yeah, just. Well, I'm sure Andrew can help with that. Getting information out there <laughs> as we speak. Well, that meeting that would be the May twentieth. Twentieth meeting. But first of all, we don't want nobody getting hurt. I'm not right. here, but it doesn't matter if I'm not here. I'm just not here. I'm, con I'm concerned about vandalism if there's nothing available. I'm just kids being angry and... Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I understand that concern, but I think it's... I'm not it's saying... It's a disservice to our community to not address this and yeah. Yeah. close it down. I, I think having a, a hearing is to engage the community is... So that's in two weeks? To do. Four. Four weeks. Four weeks? Four weeks. Okay. And you're not here? No. Because if we decide to paint it, you, you can do anything you want. Yeah, but we're going to have you paint it. Trisha doesn't want to be involved. It's your skateboard part. You can do anything you want, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you for. All right, new business. Approved fifty dollar fundraising fee structure for Oxbow Parks. We came to you with the, the first free structure we we kind of missed. You know, we, and then one of the first applications we got was for a fundraiser, and it really didn't meet any of the other criteria. So I just asked the board um, 
once again, this would be effective um, as of July 1st yes. to add that fundraiser fee. It's kind of like a nonprofit. It's the same kind of focus that they would have. It was just one of the things. Because the first one I got was from a private individual that wanted to do a fundraiser. Okay, this doesn't mean anything. We're like doing really this. So we should not bounce around, but we come back and ask you guys to, to add that category. If I, I was, I just want to ask another question about something. Something. Sorry. Do I hear a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. In a second. Any further discussion? So all you're saying is, is uh, the fifty dollar fee. So there'll be four categories: the fundraiser, the be you know a nonprofit, an individual, and a you know for-profit corporation. So those are, those are the four categories. Then that we have. I think we're fifty dollars for a fundraiser and a nonprofit, hundred dollars for private, yeah. private, and if, two hundred. If you're making money, commercial, commercial. Right. Because there are, there are even corporations sometimes that, that will come down and do a fundraiser. You know, Right. So we just once again it was the, the first application that we did. So wow, we don't have this category in here. And just made sense before we went further that again. Have there been any um, nonprofits that have come to um, to uh, request make a request and found a fifty dollar fee to be difficult for them? I don't know. No, I don't think I don't get applications mm -hmm. to make directly. I mean I I don't usually field questions. The only one that we have pending right now is the one for the the, the, the run, um, and that's in August. Mm -hmm. Maybe September. Yeah, so September, you're right, I can't remember. So we were kind of waiting to bring that one, to add that in, and then get back with the next see if it was. If it, if it is one of those things that's going to be um, uh, difficult for them to do what I would ask them to come do is come in front of the board and ask for a waiver okay. of the fee. We've done that before for stuff like that where somebody can come in and ask for a waiver of the fee. I'm just looking, we have one here coming up from the Friends of the Rail Trail. Right. So I think that's a non-profit. So the Friends of the Rail Trail, I'll speak on this because we've had a lot of discussions here in town about it because a lot of people want to use the park now that there's a lot of great things about the park. So the friends, they are doing a fundraiser, fundraiser for the rail trip. I talked, John Duffy is on our recreation committee. I said, I think you should partner with Morristown Rec and just run it under Morristown Rec because of what they were doing. They're not looking to do this whole big thing in the park. They're looking for a hub to use the rail trail and to promote the rail trail. So, I, I'm not sure where these are at, but I think, you know, as Dan has said to me sometimes, we'll get a little more of the background backside on some of these events, you know. Uh, and I think, like he said, you got to look at them event by event because some aren't really, it's one thing if you want to bring in, you know, 200 people and use the park mm -hmm. and you want it for your event. It's another thing if you're going to bring 10 people in and you're going to show the community gardens and that's the last discussion I had with them, and I did talk to them too. Of like, really, do they have to go through and pay a fee to use the? And they're like showing our community gardens. It's through UVM extension. So there's, I'm sure there'll be some more that will come before you all. That will be discussions. But well, we can deal with that case by case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We try to look at each one. And yeah. What's the? You know, what are they? What are they really doing here? What's the impact? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, is there any more discussion on this fundraising $50 fee structure? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Now, approved application for Oxbow from Rachel Duffy, Friends of the Rail Trail. Make a motion to approve it. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Approve repairs of the Noise House Museum. Uh, Yeah. Um, we're going to ask the board to approve this 
as a sole source. And the reason why I'm asking the board to do it as a sole source is because this board repair um, is, needs to be a match to what is there. If you do repoint on something and you use different mortar or, or different cement, it actually can start to crack the brick. It can start to do a whole bunch of things differently to the structure. So Donnie Blake has a lot of experience doing this. He understands it. The people that he works with understands what we're doing, trying to do this repair. So and there's very, very, very few people in in the state or even in this area at all that really know how to do this. So this is more of a historical repair than it is some of the other techniques that, that I do go out to bid on. In this particular case, you know, Donnie has the expertise, you know, um, and understands what we're trying to accomplish here. And uh, we've worked with Donnie over the years, and Donnie does great work, and he's always done it as a fair price for us, too. This is more than just a chimney. This is the foundation walls? No, there's nothing it's a back the wall. foundation walls. Okay. No. It's a back wall. A back wall? The back wall, the, the chimney, you know, me and Bob actually went over and looked at it the other day. If, you, if you're in the basement of the chimney that's on the south side, there's really not a whole lot holding that chimney up there anymore. No. And you know, and the other thing is, there's a lot of moisture that's gotten down inside of the chimney, so a lot of that is just deteriorated. So they're going to cap the chimney, they're going to repoint everything, they're going to rebuild you know, the structural integrity of, of the chimney. So you know, we we had an engineer over there looking at it, and he's kind of helped us prioritize some of the stuff. And we had Donnie over there looking at it, you know, from that historical reconstruction perspective too, on, on what it's going to take to get some of that stuff done. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to approve the $22,687.50 as the total budget uh, with uh, Donnie Blake Jr. Incorporated doing the work with Soul Source? Second. Do you have the amount? $22,687.50. Okay. okay, is there a, I got a second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Um, so it says, the estimate says not a cap price, and I understand that when you're doing one of those structures, you kind of come up, you may come across things that could jump things up. But I'd like Correct. to, I'd like to put something in place, perhaps, that brings it immediately to a stop to bring it back to the board for review. If it's more than ten percent, yeah. Sure, I'm fine. Whatever the board wants to do. And I can, I can amend my motion to add that in as well. I'm just, I'm concerned that we have an open end top. I know Don well enough to know he's not going to do that. So just. At what point do we come back and review this if it's going to go over the 22-6 budget? Over 20, over 10 percent more. Something like that. That's. I would add that to my motion, though. Was that your second? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Any further discussion? I just have a question. I know we've been raising half a cent, but um, and I know there's grants for everything out there. But have we researched grant opportunities? We can go back and research some more on that. Um, the, the only one I have right now that I know is the state does through the, the historical foundation that the state has some green opportunities for that. We got a ton more work to do over there. So I'll, I'll mention that to the White House. Trustees is going to do that. I think we, we've got a small grants to the floor. We had like $10,000 or so when we redid the steeple. So I think we can research some of those things too. So there are a few small ones out there like that. Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, approved purchase of the truck for the street garage. Doug, you want to talk about that? Well, we're, we need a truck. Yeah. I mean, this one here has been nickel and dumbing us to death this you know, past year. And even before that, EG air valves. Uh, turbos, I mean, all the time. Um, Kenny did up a spreadsheet for you um, that yep. kind of just compares it. Doug did go look at um, some other models of trucks. The problem that we have is the garage is that they were too tall, they won't fit in. So the International is the only one that has the height returns for us to get us in that garage. So he did go look at the JV and see that they were too tall. Let the air the tires. Yeah. That's what we talked about, too. <laughs> Putting up weight in it. Yeah. <clears throat> this isn't a flatbed, is it? 
No, there's the, the, there's the chassis and then there's the body of the dock body. Um, we also make sure that um, this, you know, not just this one, but both of them, um, this has a 72 month um, warranty on it. Okay. And this is a plan in our budget anyway. Yep, but actually, this one is actually under our budget. Yeah. Like 27,000. Yeah. 27 under. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve the purchase of the uh, truck for the uh, highway department in the amount of $147,213 net of the trade in. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? So passed. Next, we'll do the new highway truck. Is that you, Roland? It is. And that's the What can you tell us? Oh, it's a yeah, we see this one. So it's drop this. That's pretty much what Doug said. We got two old ones down there. We're dropping too much money. Well, said it's in this one. Yeah. So, so we can get rid of some small ones and put the tandem and put the tandem. So the spreadsheet wants to be in the back highlights everything. And it wants to be in the back highlights of it. So you have to send it to the month more people on this. Yes. Yes. So, if you go with the international, there's another thousand dollar rebate you should have to buy that. Right. And we're getting buying the warranty too, right? The warranty extra is warranty good for seven years. Good. But don't forget the warranties are very tricky. Yeah, I know. You know. <laughs> but you, you got to have them though. Uh, Maybe you missed you get that. So, seven year warranty or 72 months? Because those are two different times. 84. 84 months? 84, seven years. Okay. Seven years. About as long as we can get it. It is as long as we can get it. That's as long as you can get it. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion we approve the purchase using Clark's as the vendor. Second. Any further dis discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? So pass. Next, designate reserve fund. You're welcome. Is that you, Dan? It's me and Dina. So, yeah. He's hiding back there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just might that we would like to hear actually the last mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that we wanted for just some projects that we wanted to finish up with those projects. Um, the first one is we still have an oil water, actually an oil and water holding tank that we need to install for highway garage. Um, to keep the water that comes out of our oil water separator from going to the septic system and, and infiltrating into the groundwater. Um, we have the tank already, we just need to finish the stall, and I think we'll have to actually do that for us. And then we'll have some plumbing and electrical work to do that. Um, I have worked with uh, the water and light department. <clears throat> they will take that water from us at no charge and we'll be able to run until the sewer treatment plant. So once we have it in, and then um, Jerry actually, Jerry already did a little design so that we'll actually be able to plumb it back into the garage and be able to move right into our tanker and then take it to the headboard. So I just want to be able to keep that funding available um, so that we can get that project finished up this summer. Um, and then we had money for the Act 250 permit in last year's budget. Obviously, we're still working on that. Um, I want to be able to, to continue to use that money that we set aside in that budget year to, to finish paying for the Act 250 permit. And then the last item, um, when we did the A Street, the, the B Street project last year, um, we didn't um, use all of that money. So what I'd really like to do, um, we kind of, I think in keeping with some of the, the board's wishes, is to take that and, and designate that. Um, primarily what I would like to do is there's a company called uh, Classic Curves. Um, they do a grand curbing and they're extremely efficient and fast at it. 
and to be able that one section of where there is no sidewalk park tree is, is to use them to put in the curbing up there um, once I get an opportunity to do it because they are they did Maple Street in like two days so it would take us a month to do a project like that but they 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 have a crew that's all they do. So what I'd really like to do is just take this money that we had left over from that project so that we can get the curb set and, and get that piece of that project done um, fast and out of the way and we can go back and work on getting the sidewalk put in there as well. Because once the curb's set, the rest of the sidewalk goes together pretty easy. They can be done separately though. So yes, yeah, you, you know, first thing you have to do is go in and set the, the granite and then somebody can come in and form off the granite to do that sidewalk. But they are so much more efficient at it than, than we'll ever be, and rightfully so. Um, and they supply everything, they supply the granite, um, they have the crew, they, they do everything, and they're really, really good at what they do. You know, they, they pick up a lot of contracts. Did they do the sidewalk down? Um, no, um, they didn't do that the one. Um, Jim Bradley did that. On the he did down here? Well, by the church, he, he did that That's one. We did last yeah, summer. he did that one. So, yeah, they went over on, they, excuse me, they went over on Harrow Street, did that section over there. Oh, yeah. Also, and up through to the hair cutting place. Yeah. And that was it for the money. Yeah. yeah. We had one section there. They came up, well, near Bill Moans. They continued off there, so. That looks nice, too. Yeah, sure. they, yeah they did. The, the really good reference project is they did all the, um, curbing that's on the bypass, and they did all of our curbing um, that's on uh, Maple Street, and they, they are just tremendous at what they do. It, it's too late for me, obviously, to get anything done this, this year with them, but I can start to look at that then for next year's construction season once the paving is all done and out of the way. Right. Um, and, and Doug and I have probably you know, had some good discussions about that. That's a good way to get that project kind of jump started and get that sidewalk put in. So that, Richard, help me with this because you walk that, you know it, on the back of your hand, pretty much from Tripp's Corner, correct? Uh, yeah, well, I was just below, yeah, it would be uh, the old Menard place, probably. Well, it's a driveway into the, the old drive into the school. It, into the school. Yeah. Yep. Up yep. around the corner. It's Almost a pain out of the up to Steve Leach's or farther. So. Right, yeah, further. Yeah, up to water there light. Is, there's just a line that there's not even <laughs> right. a sidewalk there, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I suggest we start at the village end where the houses are tighter to the street and get that right. as far as we can with that amount of yeah. money and get it done. It's <clears throat> used a lot in that oh, way. At least if the, if the curb is there, it's going to be easier to build the sidewalk from there. And I think it's just this is an opportunity. When we were able to, to save some money from last year, that that, that construction project last year, um, sidewalks are probably already getting that one connected and being able to, to take this and get that piece done okay. is something I would recommend. All right, who wants to take a stab at the motions? You want them separately? <laughs> you have them? Yes. We have them. Let's do them separate, yeah. though. All right. Make a motion to move to the uh, Move to reserve 9000 from the FY 1718 general fund surplus for the oil water separate tank at Cochrane Road Garage. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. I move to reserve $14,553 from the FYI 1718 general fund budget surplus for the Act 250 amendment for the pit. I have a second. motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number three. I move to utilize the balance of the earmark Route 100 sidewalk fund in the amount of $61,304.95 to be used for sidewalk curb on Elmore Street. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pass. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Next, approve local emergency management plan. This is uh, something that's due every year. Um, yeah. And go to the state. It's just a real basis for us to work off of. Um, 
Any changes from the from the last plan? Other than you know some of the names you changed here and there, but other than that, no. Parkway Miles. Yeah. Was it Johnson Farm and Yard or Guys Farm? Uh, no, it's just Johnson because we, we use them a lot in Rome because if they need rentals, mm -hmm. uh, okay. callers, stuff like that, you know, that's where we go to for that type of stuff. So, so that, that's you know, Jerry, of course, you know, he's always really been a big help to us um, for any time that we need another excavator or a bigger excavator. You know, if we have more work good workouts. Um, so you know, those are the people that we, we fall back on for those kind of things. Make a motion we approve of the updated plan. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> so pass. <coughs> Next, approve payment cut for Ron Bourne, Park Street. Um, you see this one, this is the new They're having a problem with their civil connection out to the, the house or the, the building house. Is that uh, May, so they need the ability to dig it up and replace that, that service connection. Um, Doug went out and gave the estimate for us to do the asphalt patch. Um, John Vaughn was needed $1,043.23. Uh, Vaughn has agreed to pay that, so that's not a problem. So um, they're probably looking to get started on this as soon as possible just because they are having a problem um, with their service connection. Yeah, we have to pay what's coming in. And yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, they were trying to get it done, anything like that before everybody gets into it. All right, do we hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any further dis discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Next, approve zoning and subdivision fees effective May 1st, 2019. And this is this once again is um, back to the last meeting um, where we had MSI back in. And Todd and I, you know, went through it, and realistically, we think that no zoning fee should ever exceed five thousand dollars because that's way way over what it really would cost us to you know do all the things that we need to do administratively to issue that permit. So um, and then we would like to affect it you know, retroactively to May first. Do I hear a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Any so further discussion? Does the language on here satisfies the concerns that we yes. brought up before? Yes. So that, that's one that we, you know, that we looked at from the MSI came in. That was $12,660. Once again, you know, very rarely will we ever see a 160,000 square foot building being built. You know, so, most zoning fees do run off of the square foot type of thing, but it just doesn't make sense that you know that somebody gets dinged that much for an administrative fee for that. Just, the concern I have is that we may be nearsighted as far as capping. I don't want a rigid cap because Morse is growing. There's still open land here, and we could see a very large project come into town at some point in time. That would actually cost us more than five thousand dollars to do the background research, the, the legwork, or the zoning permit. So that's my concern. I don't. Um, I think you know to, to, to offer that. So you know, let's take something with um, the fifty houses. You know, there's there's several processes to go through on that. You have a subdivision process that you would pay for. There's there's all that process, and then each individual house would have a building permit fee. So this is really the building permit itself. It's, it's not some of those other things that go along with that planning process to get it there. Um, we couldn't think of any other that would come to this. I mean, if you take some of the other bigger buildings, um, you know, like Gunstuffer and, and Hanford's, they still would probably be underneath a $5,000 know, fee for the building permit itself. So, I'm thinking Outside the box, somebody wants to go in and buy uh, Stewart property, the, the Morsel Plaza, and level the strip malls there to build a much larger building. I mean, this thing outside the box, I don't want to run our thinking because Morsel is growing. We're trying to grow responsibly, but I just that was just my concern. If 
you think we're, we're going to hit it at 5,000? I, I think it. so. I, you know, just watching it and, and actually being through with some bigger projects like that before, even administratively, to, to get it through um, you know, a DRV process, I think we'd be hard pressed to really have more than a $5,000 administrative cost. I, and this was, you know, this was a challenging project in itself, too, because it is so big. And, uh, you know, so I think this, once again, this hits kind of the extreme of what we will see. Um, I, with the exception of a really, really huge big box store coming in, you know, but once again, you still have all that other process to go through to get there to do that too. So, um, like I think you're more likely in that particular case to get tied up at an Act 250 level than you are at a local level. Uh, okay. I, you know, relate back to I think they spent close to $100,000 being through the state permitting process. So, yeah. on that building, there really wasn't any opposition to it. Mm -hmm. So they still spent $100,000 to, to get through the permitting process at the state level. All right, do we hear a motion? Move to accept the uh, zoning of subdivision fees. And a second. Effective May 1st. Any further discussion? Sorry, I have another question. <laughs> Um, is there a precedent for this anywhere else? Is this common practice to have a cap? I, I haven't really looked at other towns to see what they do. I mean, they, they do charge different rates for, you know, every town has different zoning fees and other things. I think what really struck us on, on this one is that, you know, we, we had never seen a project this size before and we were kind of, all right, we've got this fee structure in place that is really exorbitant for somebody that's coming to, to build something that's going to create jobs. So um, I, we really didn't go back on the progress. So it was just something that was totally unexpected. And we were, I think we we're really trying to work to say, you know, well, how much would we, would we ever really spend administratively to do something like this? And you know, we're not in to, once again, to make money off of this, we're in to, to cover our administrative costs and getting a project like this approved. That makes sense. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, approve naming the road. Now on the agenda it says Shadow Lane, but on the application it says Shadow Drive. Which is it? It's going to be Shadow Drive. Okay. Um, they, they went back and forth a little bit um, once the original, the original was Long Shadow Drive. Right. Um, and then they changed it a couple times on We had a couple emails back and forth floating around. So I actually went back and asked them to, to clarify it. And that's the reason why you have this email here that says, Shadow Drive. Long, you know. Scratch it down. So we, we had to go back and, and get it all ironed out so it would pass the, the test of the 911 board. So this is the correct, the correct one. All right, do we hear a motion? Make a motion to accept the name of Shadow Drive. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Where exactly uh, is, did we talk about this a couple of years back? Because it was a, actually the source of an issue with our road naming convention. There were three houses on it, but now to get their mailboxes, we were going to change their addresses. And yeah, and they didn't want to do it because they were going to with Randolph. That was the one, wasn't it? 911 was forcing us to do it, yeah. and somehow they went through and got approved like that. So it was one of those ones that did come back. Well, and this will fix it. And then this is a fix. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <clears throat> Next, Highway Foreman's Notice of Retirement. You want a motion? A motion that we approve and accept. Yeah. yeah. I think we ran out. Yep. Yeah. I did. Uh, I approve and accept the uh, the retirement notice from Roland Boving uh, as of 9619. Um, although he is going to work out vacation time up to October 21st. So and we actually the retirement. He was, yeah, he's probably, you know, the, the, the 916 would probably be around his last day of work. Yeah. He had a chance to sit down with Keen on it yet and then use his vacation time up until, you know, sometime in October. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm just thinking for the purpose of the motion, we'll let you folks work out that logistical piece, but October 21st looks to be his retirement date. Okay, so that's my motion be that uh, we accept his retirement as of October 21st, uh, 2019, with 34 years of service to our community. I'll, I'll save my thanks for another day when I can appropriately do it with When he's here. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Would would uh, that date preclude uh, hiring somebody? No. Um, fact is, my plan is to uh, get advertisements out if I have somebody in there. Right around the end of July, first of August, so that can even early, if I get in the middle, even in mid July, I think mm -hmm. the amount of details that surround that job and all the different aspects around it. So we're going to be in that house as soon as possible. Good. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. TA report. Sure. Um, just to let everybody know. Um, Last year, because we got really winter started early, um, Pike is going to be back in here to, to do paving on Cochran Road, finish that project off. Um, Stanley and Randolph started the week of May 6. So we're first on the schedule for Excellent. that to start out. So, May 6th? Um, yes, May 6th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> off the Cochran Road. <laughs> So, um, so they'll come back in to, to start that, or finish out that paving contract that we put out last year. So that's a good thing coming up. Starting, um, we didn't have any major damage, you know, the weekend or whatever. We had a couple of washouts here, some some calls that are called here and there, but nothing major. There's a little bit of damage down the Oxbow, but that's kind of typical for what we get when the water gets up that high. So nothing unusual for us. Uh, I think you'll see Doug is already out started sweeping. So people mm -hmm. are asking, we're already out starting to work on that. Raining. Yeah, <laughs> the, weather, the more the weather cooperates, the, the faster we'll get through it. Yeah. And everything's up for everybody. I saw you today. Yeah. So, um, and then Bill and I want to have a conversation with you. Um, Bill, you want to kick it off? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, May 19th through 25th, excuse me, I have a cold, so I'm, I'm dealing with that. So. Um, uh, May 19th through 25th is National EMS Week, um, and uh, we've been in uh, through the district and through the hospital. We're putting together a couple of things uh, with our hospital partners and our district colleagues, uh, where the hospital is going to be doing a education luncheon on Wednesday, uh, and then we're going to be hosting a cookout at Morristown Rescue uh, on Thursday night, which is also going to have an education component, uh, and Copley's taking care of those. Um, uh, what we wanted to do was uh, recognize uh, recognize our volunteer staff. We're, uh, mm -hmm. We've got 35 on board now. Uh, we're still 70% volunteer, uh, answering about 700 calls a year. Uh, we wanted to recognize them uh, for their for their work um, and uh, ask the town for an appropriation of. Uh, it's going to be about $400. Uh, the rescue side is picking up the other half of it, so the total amount would be about 800. Uh, and asking. Uh, uh, I emailed Dan uh, this morning for uh, for approving a, uh, a purchase uh, total of 800, of which the rescue side, uh, the volunteer rescue side, will give us uh, 400 of that back. So the total for the town would be 400. So what they're really doing is they're buying chairs. Folding the camp, chairs, yeah, yeah, the, camp, the folding camp chairs that yeah, are uh, uh, silk screened with Morristown EMS. Say Morristown EMS on the back. Oh, oh pretty sensitive about how we spend taxpayer dollars. Um, and so the, the association is going to pick up half of it. The town, from the normal budget, um, would pick up about what, just, under, yeah, but, yeah. just under $400 for it. But I'm kind of sensitive to stuff like that when we start calling gifts. However, I'm also sensitive to the fact that um, we have volunteers that put in a lot of hours. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I don't like you guys to get blindsided about something like that either, where somebody comes up and goes, hey, you spent money on these chairs, you know, what's going on kind of thing. So we just kind of wanted you guys to weigh in and get some feedback from you guys on what you thought about, you know, department funds going for a purchase like that. I mean, it's $400 typically we would, you know, 
typically it would be approved, you know, internally. You know, we would come to the board, but it's, it's kind of one of those gray areas where we're buying gifts, you know, mm -hmm. we're buying something for somebody that's, that's not. So I just, you know, wanted to come back to the board and say, how do you guys feel about that? You know, um, and, and you know, we don't have any really policy in place for anything like that. It's, it's not something that comes up all the time. So. So this purchase is one chair for every, every one of the thirty-five volunteers, right. or are they recognizing folks that? earmark length of time with the department they get a chair. Um, we were we were looking at the entire roster. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean we could certainly do that. Um, but uh, we were looking we were looking at the entire roster. How about for someone to put in thirty five years on rescue? <laughs> you can come sit in my chair, so scotch. Are you still in? No, I retired last year. You want to get a chair. All right. Well, you want me to get back on for? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Thirty-five years is enough. I think it's great. I, I don't know as I call it a gift. I call it a I appreciation. A recognition. A recognition. Yeah, kind of appreciation. I mean, on the fire department, sometimes things like that happen. I remember at Christmas time at the fire department when they gave me a broken piston because I broke the truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> Probably from a Chevy. I think it would be also a nice PR. <laughs> People using it on the community. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't. I, like uh, I wouldn't object to seeing something like this. As I said, that at your mark uh, lengths of time as volunteers with your organization, if you want to look at it down the road, okay. uh, rather than blanket covering everyone that you look at. Right. Right. Choose ten that. years of the department. That, you know, something like that would yeah. come along. I think that could be incorporated into the budget. Yeah, well, so. uh, I think yeah. Going forward, we could look at that and uh, come up with uh, with some kind of recognition and mm -hmm. policy or procedure to, to address that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those little gray areas that, once again, you know, I, I admit that I'm very very conservative as I should be with tax funds. It hits me with one of those gray areas, and I just wanted to see what you guys have a thought on that. I mean, these people have to keep up all these certifications. Right. All the time yeah, they have to initial, put into it. Their initial training and recertification yeah. was all out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, awesome. it's like I talked about earlier. Perceptions can be hard to overcome sometimes about what we do. So sometimes perceptions make it to you guys before, you know, mm -hmm. in this particular case, somebody will stop you in the grocery store and say, What are you guys doing? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This way you're prepared to. So. Okay. They can call me, I'll tell them. <laughs> Thousands of hours later. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's it. All right. Any questions for Dan? <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Do you have any questions or anything for me? I'm going to bug you out. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. Go sweep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming oh, yes. on. <laughs> Next, select board concerns. <clears throat> Judy. I would just thank Andrew and Bill for the article that was in the paper about the rescue squad. It was very informative. It was well written and a lot of good information in it and uh, it was a good read. Thank you. How about you, Chris? Uh, no, not a concern, just then probably was more appropriate in the other section, but um, update on the Oxbow bathroom. Yes, we've actually, the last thing we're working on now is we have the sign done, we have to get some structural stuff done engineering-wise, um, and it's at the state for um, the fire safety for the people to approve it. And they've got everything they need now. I don't think we should need anything else. We'll be ready to go out to dinner real soon. So the thing that kind of threw back on us a little bit was, because the architect did just his piece of it, but to go forward and get the state permits, we actually had to. And in the old days, if you wanted to build a concrete wall, you could just go build a concrete wall. Now you need a, you know, a plan. So, um, but we've got that all done. And, um, it's at the state level now for the permit. So that's where we're at on that. Moving right along. There he is. <coughs> okay. Brian. Um, I don't know if this is the right place to bring it up, but there was an issue with a dog locked in an apartment for 14 days. Nobody around. And it's cured now. But I think sometime I'd like to see us do something about, and I don't even know if we can. I mean, I, the police went over, and I guess the landlord said that they were feeding it, but some people say they weren't feeding it maybe every three, four days. Jeez. And uh, I was there this weekend two or three times, and one guy was going to go take it out and take it home with him. 
That's neglect, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I call it, neglect. And the problem with that call is we had nobody that knew direct, had direct knowledge that that dog was in there and was neglected. We can't kick in doors right. without a warrant. No, you can't, but somebody we can. Could. Now, we got all the landlord we talked to him three times. Yeah. And he assured us that he was going to get all somebody. Remember Just happened. a question because you know, some old timer years ago taught, they, they did this in another town. What he did, he went there day after day and he put tape on the windows and on the door. He'd go check it and the tape never moved. Right. After a week, he took the dogs out because. Yep. So. Well, based on something like that, you know, we had that knowledge. I mean, uh, just like I told Dan, if I went in there and picked the dog up because it had gone, well, you know, you know, it's, that would have been sad. You can't, we can't. You know, really. I mean, oh, we, as police, right. oh, I we could know have. better than that to violate somebody's cow fishery. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I would have been having breakfast with Richard when something would happen, so I would have been kind of <laughs> 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 just, oh. uh, I'd like to see, and, and again, I know maybe right now we can't, but is there any way later on if we can, uh, probably we can't make an ordinance. People have to be cooperative yeah. to us, and they won't. Yeah, I mean, they just don't want to get that involved. You know, okay. they get this. Yeah. You know, they, like she they was in Florida. They're gone. <laughs> right now, she's still not back. But when yeah. I was there yesterday, some guy was in moving her stuff out because they said the sheriff was putting a lock on the door right. today. Was it SPCA or yeah. Humane Society? Can you contact them? Uh, that was my thought. If I couldn't get any other action, but when I got there this weekend, the first thing they're going to do is lock on the door at the police station. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, all of our laws, whether it's human or, or animal, are reactive. They aren't proactive. Yeah. Something has to happen mm. before, unfortunately, in many cases, that's what happens. Mm. That's the problem of trying to develop an ordinance or a law here in town that would uh, allow us that kind of reach. It, it, we would end up in a, a lot of hot water because yes. it's a proactive law and we'd be overstepping civil rights left and right doing so. It, it, it all feels very, very horrible. It was also no problem, but the, the locks had been changed by the tenant to the door and the landlord didn't have access as well. The landlord seems to have had a whole lot more right to open that door than we would. Absolutely, and he was told that. Yeah, I mean, he had every right to really inspect the apartment so. for abandonment. Um, there's, I can think of two or three different stipulations in the landlord tenant law that he could have gone in there at any time. Right. If that apartment is not inhabited for a period of two weeks or more, I think that's an abandoned apartment and they can go in there and take a look. They can go in and look for any number of different problems. Windows open, you know, water issues. I mean, I can just think of very creative ways that they could have gone in and take a look. Well, I'm glad to know that because that would help. That's a start right there because it's going to make him Mm -hmm. well, we react. put a lot of time into it. We worked on it. Yeah, I know you guys did. Day. And it I know. Was, nobody would yeah. give us direct knowledge that, <coughs> that, that yeah, you got you got the email from the lady from the library. She I said, so. "Oh, she said she emailed you with a picture of the dog." And, no, yeah, I never got it. yeah. And the next thing I was going to go do is see the constable. City Council. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you what the council is. Yeah. <laughs> Go see the landlord. Okay. That's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Eric. I'm all set. I just wanted to uh, ask when the paving is going to begin in the downtown area of the state. You know? It's out to bid right now. And I know your, the, the completion date is supposedly by August 1st. Okay. So you don't know when it's yeah. there. I don't, you know, I don't know. It, it probably won't until you know, the, the um, bid is visible. So I do know it's out to bid. Okay, so I get that so Andrew can let people know. The thing I want to piggyback on that too is because I know Route 15 is going to be earmarked for pavement again this year too. Do we know if those two projects are going to run simultaneous <laughs> or are they going to be staggered? I have no idea. That'd be a huge impact on a lot of communities, I would think. Yeah. If those run simultaneous. I'm, I don't want to stop either one of the projects, but it would be something to inform our, our folks about. I, I don't know. I don't have the schedule with them. The state, they, they, they will communicate with the um, town projects that's doing. But their state projects, we sometimes know, especially paving. Their bigger construction projects, they do a pretty good job of paving projects this year. When done can you ask them when they're going to start? Yeah, I can find out. Yeah. I can see what contact Okay. All right, that's all I have.
Any other business? Just to let you guys know, there's more elections coming up. <laughs> coming up this spring. So there's two more special school elections. There's um, the Thursday before Memorial Day. There's the annual new um, new form school district meeting. That's going to be in Stowe. <coughs> it's a floor vote. They're alternating towns. And then the Tuesday following Memorial Day, so the day after Memorial Day, there's an Australian ballot um, here, which is the merged school budget. Okay. Just as people are asking on the street. When do the absentee ballots come out? Today. Up? Okay. I also want to add that we're going to need a big crew that Tuesday. I don't imagine. I imagine it'll be like the last one, but um, I, I expect it'll be busier than the last one, but, and then we'll probably do some, we'll have to combine the, the votes at the end, so I won't need everybody to come together because it'll be um, people from all the towns that'll come count. Tuesdays I can work if you need. And I wanted to add, I'm not going to be at the next meeting. I'm going to be out of the country on business. No So, so the other three for May 6th? May 6th. Yeah, Chris will be chairing the, that meeting. I'll be here. Right, Chris? Yeah. I'm here. If something happens and somebody can't tend to let us know right away, so we try to reschedule. I'll be back for the 20th meeting. I, I've already started, you know, there's reason, one of the reasons why there's a lot on this agenda, and there will be a lot on the May 22nd agenda, so maybe we're only going to have three. May 20th. May 20th? May 20th, yes, yeah. thank you. So, you know, I've been kind of moving stuff around because the, the bigger items I always like to have a full board for. Okay. Any other business? I move to find the premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party to clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So passed. I move that we enter executive session to discuss the pending of proper litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313 of the Vermont Statutes to include Dan Lindley, the town administrator. Second. I have a second. Any further dis discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion no, passed. Make a motion that we uh, file a notice of intent for with the watershed management division for our municipal roads uh, general permit and authorize Dan Lindley to uh, sign on the town's behalf. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed.